Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I begin with and by the name of Allah, the compassionate and merciful. Uh, praise be to Allah, besides whom there is no partner, and who sent the prophets from Adam all the way up to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I testify that there is no deity to worship except Allah. And I ask that Allah accept our good deeds and forgive our sins. Um, to those of you in the audience who do not know me, and to non-Muslims in the audience, I extend to you also general uh, well wishes and greetings. Um, I'm recording this in order to address the answer to a question that uh, Sheikh Asim al-Hakim uh, gave when someone asked him on his Twitter about the Black Lives Matter movement in the U.S., which I would say also is in South Africa at this point, Australia uh, and Brazil, to my knowledge. Um, his answer made a lot of people angry, myself included, when I first read the answer. And uh, by the same token, the sheikh was answering according to what he has been told and what he has been taught. And so I'm recording this in order to do justice to both sides. Um, because I have lived both in the United States and I have lived both in, uh, yeah, I've lived both in the United States and in Saudi Arabia. And because I am from Baton Rouge, where Alton Sterling was shot and killed, and before him, Willie Esco, a retarded man back in the 90s, was shot and killed. And before that, uh, Yoshiro Hattori from Japan on exchange in the United States was shot and killed by Greg Pearson. Um, after some people uh, explained that uh, Yoshiro was shot because he was mistaken for a light-skinned black man, um, and where two parties whose names I don't know were sitting on their porch in a black neighborhood. And when a police car was in pursuit of somebody else altogether, the police car ran up on the porch and killed the two who were sitting on the porch. And nobody was ever charged for any of these things and nobody went to jail. Not to mention the more recent killings that have gone up into the hundreds. Only a few of whom are famous and we know their names. Sandra Bland being one of them, Eric Garner, Tamir Rice, uh, Alton Sterling, Philando Castile, um, Charles Kinsey, who was shot and survived in North Miami. Um, the event of which traumatized the patient he was trying to coax back into the home. And uh, countless others, the names of which Michael Brown, Trayvon Martin, none of whose killers have been brought to justice. I was in Baton Rouge when Alton was shot, and a friend of mine was his friend. And I must say that I was very happy when Abdullah Muflahi, the store owner of Triple S, uh, recorded the video, hid that video while he was uh, arrested, put into the car so they could go and confiscate the store's video. I was very proud of uh, Charles Lede and his friend who recorded it from another angle because they exposed it. One recorded it but did not post it. Charles Lede went ahead and posted it and never gave up his friend. He lost his job because of it. The fact that somebody can record a murder being carried out by police officers and have to fear for their lives from police and from the establishment shows that there is a grave injustice. And the fact is that Abdullah Muflahi is a Yemeni. That's black, whether y'all want to admit this or not. Yeah, black comes in various shades, but that's black. Matter of fact, the Yemenis were the first people outside of Africa. They're the ancestors of everybody else outside of Africa. Quiet is kept. He has to leave and hide, and he's suing the Baton Rouge Police Department, but he has to leave Baton Rouge, in and out. If he goes into Baton Rouge, he has to quickly leave thereafter. Aside from that, Charles Lede, fired, still hasn't been rehired, can't find another job because he posted the video. George Zimmerman is not hurting. He's sitting on 100,000 U.S. dollars because he sold the gun he used to kill Trayvon Martin. Folks, we know the grievances. 
Now, I'm gonna start by addressing folks on the side of the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, and I'm gonna drop a bombshell on um, this information towards the end. Um, here's the deal. The first thing, black folks, let me tell you this. Um, Sheikh um, Asim Al-Hakim said it is um, a movement for them, not for us, support Islam and Muslims. Now, there is such a thing in Islam as being careful of what cause you support naturally. This is something people do even when they're not Muslim. I get it. Um, Sheikh Asim Al-Hakim does not fully understand the racism of the West. He does not know about it. He is largely, I'm not saying stupid, I'm saying he's just largely ignorant, meaning uninformed of it. This is not a pejorative term when I use it in this context. He's really, he's not been told because you see his experience in any Western nation was to study English. His primary focus of study was on the religion. So he's answering from the religious knowledge he has without the context of Western racism and white supremacy or global racism and white supremacy. He's not fully familiar with that, so he gave the answer that he knew when he said all lives matter. Because you see, of course, all lives should matter. That is very true. All lives are supposed to matter. Morally speaking, all lives matter, except for the lives of the criminals who have violated the lives and the property of others. That's in the Sharia. Highway robbers do get shot or decapitated. They're executed when they're convicted and proven guilty. Um, yes, if you can prove that a homosexual uh, in a Sharia jurisdiction committed a homosexual act, yes, they're executed if once it's proven. That's the Sharia. But um, these are controversial. But I'm merely saying that outside of acts that people kept, have control over, lives matter. All lives matter. In that regard, yes, that's true. Sheikh Asim did not know, he didn't know why many white people in the, Uni the United States will say all lives matter. See, Sheikh Asim does, is not aware, not only of the extent of racism, he does not realize how much people in the West try to cover it up and sweep it under the rug with certain statements. Even in his own society, people do this in its subconscious. They don't know that they're not aware of what they're doing, but they do it. And I'll explain this in a little bit, black folks. When I talk to him and everybody else with his complexion and, and hair texture, really. Now, um, the next day, some people ask him and some people just fussed at him. This, this caused a big stink. People in Jeddah, in Saudi Arabia, people that, that are not black um, got on him and said, you don't know what you're doing. You don't know what you're saying. You don't know what the context of that is here or over there. Because he has a lot of issues he has to follow. That is true. Later on, he wrote back and he replied. And he said, some wise men asked me about it and I'll clarify it. And some didn't. Look, my, my father-in-law, 32 years, was as black as night. He was like the father that is like another father to me. So no, it's not about dismissing the rights or the concerns of black people, but the Muslims over there will take up the Black Lives Matter cause and movement and they will forget about the Muslim causes like Chechnya, Palestine, Shashan. Slow your roll, bro. Now this is where we have to correct him. And I'm going to do that now publicly because it's Commons Republic but I'm not going to fuss at him because, like I said, there were things he did not know. And many of you all over there in the U.S. Or, or Australia or Brazil, for that matter, don't know that he didn't know these things. And that's okay. And to not know is okay. I'll inform him in this recording, inshallah. But I want to make you all know. And by the way, when he said his father-in-law is black or his former father-in-law is black, he's not saying that his He's not saying that in order to say, oh, look, I love black people. I like black people. Here's the token Negro in my family. No, that's what it sounds like to us because that's what we grow up hearing in the Western English speaking nations. That is true, but that's not coming from him. Because you see, in the Arab mindset, when you mention someone who was close to you, someone who was important to you, they are truly important. Their loyalty 
uh, with friends and with family is oftentimes beyond ours. So when they say this, they are actually saying, no, no, I can't um, offend such a person. And therefore, uh, I must view us as equal. It's, it's, it's a deeper meaning than when somebody from the West says, oh no, no, my, my maid is black. I, I, like, I have black friends. I date black women. You know, it's a different story. Now, I'm not saying this to say that all of you are going to agree with the way he said it. I'm simply saying that it's not the same as when somebody uh, in the white West English speaking world says it because it's not meant to be dismissive. He is actually coming from what he has been taught and he has not been made aware of the extent of racism and white supremacy, neither on a Western nor on a global scale. I will do that now, inshallah. And I'm going to go ahead and drop the bombshell right now about the Black Lives Matter movement for the Muslims who are black and in the Western English speaking world, as well as the Muslims who are in Saudi, whether you agree with Sheikh Asim al-Hakim or whether you disagree with Sheikh Asim al-Hakim. I'm going to drop this bombshell now before I transition into addressing Sheikh Asim al-Hakim and pretty much everybody that looks like him. I mean physically looks like him for their own benefit, not to be hateful. The Black Lives Matter concept is Islamic actually because uh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam was mukafahat al-ansuriya. He was against racism and tribalism and discrimination in general. Ansuriya is a word that encompasses all forms of discrimination that are unfair in Arabic. In the U.S., we say racist, but there are also uh, words in the English language, tribalist, nationalist. These do not have to do with race. They generally have to do with tribe or nation. But these are types of discrimination. In, in Arabic, ansuri would mean discriminatory. It doesn't, speci it doesn't specify uh, racial discrimination. Now, uh, I want to uh, point out, Muslims, that, uh, well, you know, we'll skip that. Never mind that for now. But um, the other thing uh, is that uh, though the Black Lives Matter concept is, is true, uh, the Black Lives Matter movement as we know it is, it was started by... Uh, from what I've been told, it was started by three black lesbian women. They're only into other women. So I understand why, as Muslims, uh, we may have to get with the concept or promote the concept, although we cannot limit ourselves, per se, to that, um, to, to that movement, meaning any organizations or anything like if somebody said incorporates a Black Lives Matter corporation, we could not jump on that. But the concept is valid. Yes, Black Lives Matter. Um, they matter as much as anybody else's. But unfortunately, emphasis is necessary on uh, Black Lives right now in the Uni United States and Brazil um, and Australia. While uh, also emphasis is needed on by these respective communities, emphasis is also needed on Latino lives, Native American lives. Um, but you see, Sheikh Asim, as I mentioned, does not know this. If he was familiar with, and some of you will say, well, no, he knows what's going on. He speaks good English. Yeah, he speaks good English. That doesn't mean he's lived in these countries. If he had, then he would have probably been able to find out by now that these, um, this movement was started by three women that don't like men. Therefore, he would have said this. We Muslims cannot follow behind them. They cannot be our leaders, although we can admit that they have a valid point and cooperate on a particular valid point. But this is not what he said because he didn't know. Okay, now. Now, Sheikh Hassan. Uh, and this is pretty much for anybody who uh, looks like has the same complexion and hair texture in the Muslim world, this is going to be addressed to you all. <clears throat> the first thing that I want to inform um, Sheikh Asim and all Arabs that don't consider themselves black uh, is that 
you all may not know this, but now you will know that in the U.S., white people love to say, those who hate the discussions on race, love to say all lives matter because they want to silence the discussions on race that America needs. Um, therefore, the phrase all lives matter, despite its moral correctness, is misused and is only quoted for the wrong reasons. You see, we black folks know that white supremacy is a global system now and that it always uh, obeys two rules, white on top, black on bottom. If people are trained to not kill black people for no reason, they'll automatically stop killing the Latinos and the Native Americans that they've been killing for little to no reason. This is what they don't know, what you all may not know. So if we get into the heads of police officers that black lives matter, the lives of Arabs who don't consider themselves black in the U.S. will automatically be safer. You did not know that white people call you all niggas too, but now you will know. They call you sand nigger, desert nigger, terrorist, towel heads. These are the name of camel jockey and even camel fornicator. But they started off with sand nigger. And they call you this because of your close genetic relationship to black Africans from which we come. But you call yourselves white. They laugh at you. Even when they tell you that on their census and population counting forms you should check white, they're still laughing at you because you consider yourselves white, for real. And think that they're going to treat you the way they treat white people, the way they treat each other. Black people also laugh at you when this happens because we know how whites actually are in the Western world. Eastern Europe is a different ball game. But in the Western world, we know how they are. You may not know this, but whites oftentimes tell us which black person is their close friend or even their relative at times to try to stop you from correcting them from espousing or showing a racist idea. They will point to um, a black, if not a black relative, they'll even point to a black friend. A Sheikh Asir. I said Sheikh Asir. When you said that your father-in-law for 32 years was black as night and he was like your father, you did not know that whites oftentimes do the same thing in America to silence people from telling them that they have to correct a racist idea they may have in their, in their minds. But you forgot something, Sheikh Asim. If your father-in-law was black and you're talking about your wife's father, that means your wife was black. So you married a black woman. That's okay. As long as one of her black brothers could marry one of your white sisters with the same dowry, it's okay that you married a black woman. But now we know in Saudi culture that's normally not the case. I'm pointing this out because you forgot. You may not have known, but we know that if you marry uh, a black person to a non-black person, the baby's black, genetically speaking. This is why whites are so afraid of black people. Simply by having babies with black people, they can lose their population. You may not have known, but many Arabs who don't consider themselves to be black have the same fear as if their non-black blood is holy so they can't lose it. Many people who are not black and found themselves next to black people have developed this fear of genetic annihilation. You may not have known, 
But when people dis express these kinds of fears, they sound to us like the same white terrorist of the Ku Klux Klan who used this fear as an excuse to lynch black men. You may not have known that every year thousands of black people who were Muslim leave Islam because of these attitudes of Muslims regarding race and color. But now y'all know. Y'all may not have known that if you sound like these same white folks, we are traumatized psychologically and we will avoid and leave alone and even take as an enemy any non-whites who sound exactly like these white supremacists under whom we grew up in the West. You may not have known that the Arab world is partially and Arab attitudes towards non-Arabs are partially responsible for the genocide of the Native Americans and the kidnapping and the enslavement of black Africans. The way that this happened and the reason I said this was because when Spain was conquered it was largely conquered by North Africans who at that time were pretty much unarguably black. Arabs were amongst them. Arabs did not look at these North African uh, black men as being their equal. I don't know how much of this was based on language and how much, which, how much was based on color. I know that Arabs at that time were known to not count as equals the North African men. Now, this changes something. This is telling, in a sense, and here's why I say that. One of the issues, and one of the problems with this is that um, this was a division between the Muslims that the, Spanish, uh, the Spaniard Christians were able to exploit. Add to this another problem. Just like today, back then, those Arab men and maybe some Amazigh men too became infatuated with white women, preferring them even over the brown and black Muslim women. This was another way for the Spanish Catholic population to exploit division between the Muslims, and it worked. Now, we know that the, the Muslims were eventually driven out of Spain in 1492. That's the same year that Columbus made his trip to the Americas. Did you all know that that was how he got the wasta with King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella to get the ships to sail across the Atlantic and wipe out the Native Americans? Did you all know this? Were you all aware of this? Well, and enslave the Africans later? Yes. It started with the Arabs not treating the North African Muslims as equals in Spain. This was the beginning of the end. And that happened from the very beginning of the invasion and the conquest of Spain. You all may not have known this, but you know now. And I'm not saying these things to cast blame on you all. I'm saying these things to help you all to not repeat any of the same errors. You all may not have known, but now you know that without black people who were practicing Sunni Islam and black people who were practicing some other religions that they were calling Islam, you would not be able to go to the U.S. in the relative safety that you have now and practice Islam as freely as you can practice it today. It should be a lot better in the U.S. It should be. But without their efforts, it would be much worse for you. You may not know this, but you will now know that Malcolm X was abandoned by the non-black Muslim community in the United States and his family was abandoned when he died. Because even after his acceptance of Islam, Orthodox Islam, and telling white America that this was the solution to America's race problem, even after this, and he was killed, no non-black Muslim came forward 
to help his family or to even allow his janazah to be conducted at the masjid or to even allow his body to be buried in their cemeteries. It didn't happen. To this day, he and his wife are buried in a cemetery that's not for Muslims. Did you all know this? Because non-black Muslims turn their backs on him. Bunch of punks and cowards. Why? You all may not have known this. Now these were the ones in America. They weren't living in these countries with you now. Where I'm living and where you're living. But they were from these countries. Where I'm living and you're living. You may not have known this. But you will now know that there has been a serious problem festering between black and Arab. And black people are getting fed up. We're getting angrier with Arabs than we are with white people at times. Because most of them aren't Muslim. And they don't claim to be. So we somewhat don't, we don't expect as much. We come to you, we expect more, we get less. Abdullah Muflahi. I could bet you money if gambling was allowed that Abdullah Muflahi the Yemeni store owner in Baton Rouge who videotaped the murder of Alton Sterling and exposed it along with another witness um, who was not named but whose friend posted it on his or her behalf. I could bet you money that Abdullah Muflahi is being questioned by his own people at times why did you videotape them shooting that slave? He's just a slave. So what? <laughs> now look at the trouble you're in. You're worried about the cops. I could bet you that this is the case. And probably the young Yemenis are not the ones doing this. I don't think that's the case. I bet it's the older ones, the elders of the community. Oh, he's a slave. Yani Abda. Why would you do that? You all may not have known, but you now know that when you call black people Abda, we know about this. And we know that you don't have any such word that is nearly as insulting for white people. And we're beginning to hate you for it. You all may not have known, but you will now know that if black folks have the same uh, racist attitudes towards whites, it's a reaction. And therefore, we do not tolerate criticism about us being racist against whites. So goddamn what? Who is the oppressor in this case, us or them? Now, for this comment, Sheikh Asim, Sheikh Asim, I am upset with you. For the rest, I think you just didn't know. But for this, you knew damn well, sir, with all due respect. I'm not saying this with hatred, but I am angry about this point. You knew goddamn well that white people oppressed us, not the other way around. You knew goddamn well because they colonized your lands too. You knew damn well that the British colonized Malaysia, not Africa. No African nation or people or tribe colonized Malaysia. <coughs> or Egypt, or any part of Europe for that matter, or any part of Africa, or any part of the Americas. Black people didn't do this. You knew this. And you didn't colonize Europe. You knew that they came and colonized us, and they stole and kidnapped us, and they colonized your lands, and took your resources, and took our resources out of Africa, and did the same to the real Americans in South, Central, and North America. You knew this. How dare you use that as an excuse? If black people could be racist, because see, racism implies power along with the bias. The power to enforce your bias and affect their lives. If we could be racist against them, that would only be justice. Now, if we're prejudiced against them, meaning we don't like them, hey, look, so damn what? We don't have to, sir. This is not something that's required except between the Muslims. And believe you me, African Americans who are Muslim do not have problems with Caucasians who are Muslim. No. B between the Muslims, black folks and white folks get along better than black people and Arabs do. You may not have known this, Sheikh Asim, but a lot of the younger people I'm addressing now, Arabs, when I say Arabs who don't consider themselves to be black, most of them know, but you may not have known, that the Muslims in the United States are not abandoning the causes of the Muslims elsewhere. Most of them who are involved with the Black Lives Matter movement are also involved with the movements of, uh, for justice for Syria, justice for Palestine. Most of them are. They leave one protest and go to another. They write an article on one issue and write an article on another. 
There are a few articles on the blackness of the Palestinian struggle and the Palestinianness of the black struggle. But for your information, sir, we black people don't look at Palestinians and call them terrorists or sand niggers. White folks do. S Palestinians look at black people and call them slave, Zanuj, Abid. We're sick of that. And frankly, sir, what we need you to do, and I'm saying this with love, not hatred, what we do need from you and from Shayuk like you, who are very intelligent and educated, um, and who know the religion, and who also know another language outside of Arabic, in your case, English, and maybe in some other Shayuk's case, English, French, Spanish. What we need you to do is go to the communities in the Muslim lands in which you are living and tell them, confront the racist practices you find amongst them and tell them, no, this is not, um, you're not normal. You got maybe three or four racist ideas in your society. It's not the same as the West, but it's bad enough because you're Muslim. It's a terrible disappointment. The few that you got, you got to get rid of. The small level of racism you have is too much. Get rid of it. It is a threat to your very faith itself. These are seeds of kufr and apostasy. Don't believe me? Look at the shaitan. Do you not call him the first ansuri? And what happened? He disobeyed Allah because of it. Well, Let me just be honest. I'm seeing similar seeds of this kind of thinking amongst Muslims right now. And I don't mean the ones who are black. Oh no, they don't have this problem. It's the ones who don't count themselves as black or really aren't black. <laughs> they have some of these racist ideas subconsciously not realizing they got it and with no malice, no intention of hatred, but they got them. Because the brainwashed. You all may not have known that the brainwashing was intentional, but it was. That's what the television is for. And there are four main ideas you all have. Racist ideas you got that you've been brainwashed with, even though you don't have racial hatred in your societies. But you all, you the in the show, you like you're going to have to confront these in your societies. Or there's going to be some serious cuss word between black folks and Arabs. And I will not support Arabs in that conflict. If it gets down to it, which would take about another two generations at least, if this brainwashing continues successfully through the television, unchecked and unchallenged by the likes of y'all. If it gets to that point, I will support black people against Arabs. I will even advocate throwing Arabs that are not black into the ocean and seeing if Europe will rescue them out of the Mediterranean and the Gulf and all these areas. If it gets to that point, I don't want it to. I really don't want it to get to that point. I would like to be able to see us develop some sort of unity. Even if it's just simply a cooperative unity to start with. For the sake of mutual defense, I want us to start with that. But it's going to take some serious work, and it's going to take a lot of work on you all's part. Not black people's, yours. You all are going to have to get rid of the word abd from your vocabulary unless you're talking about obudiya, slavery. If not, don't use the word ab to mean any race or color of people. That's a goddamn racist custom that they have. I don't think you do this, Sheikh. I'm just saying you're going to have to confront those of your people that, that do do it. When you hear it, you got to get in their face about it. Confront them. I'll knock you out if you keep this up. You may have to do that. You may have to threaten to knock somebody's chin out. Knock them unconscious. Put them in a the hospital. Stop this mess. You're going to divide us. That's the first thing. Second thing. Stop equating whiteness with beauty automatically and, and black with ugly <laughs> automatically. Beauty and ugly exist in every race, even in every family. Thirdly, stop calling yourselves white. You all aren't white and they laugh at you for doing it. Fourthly, get rid of this idea of trying to marry as white as possible because it sounds to us like you're trying to breed yourselves to become uh, real white people, the ones from Europe, you're trying to breed yourselves to become like them. Now what this sounds like to us is, okay, I mean, you know, you can marry who you like personally, but if you, this is a cultural thing, it sounds like you're trying to become white, more white than you are. That's going to make you our enemies. 
because even the whites who become Muslims don't like that idea. They laugh at y'all for that. You're going to have to confront your people about these things. Y'all aren't white. It'd be okay if y'all were, but you just aren't, genetically speaking. And this attempt to try to become white through marriage with the whitest of you is a doggone shame. And this calling of black people slaves. I know it's not done with hatred, but I don't care. It's still an evil. It's not just a bad habit. It's an evil habit. It's nasty. It's insulting. Because these same people who call us Abid can't stand it when white people call them Irhabi, Abid al Rimal, you know, sand nigger, terrorist, raghead, camel fornicator. They can't stand it. But then they want to turn around and call us Abid. And some of the people I've heard use this word are black themselves. I had this happen today in my class. This dude's hair is nappy. He can't run a comb through his hair easily. And he called black women Abdat. I had to stop him and say, hey, bro, you think you're talking about black women. You, you said slaves. No, no, no. Loon Abd. Loon Abd. No, bro. And we argued about this. And I told him some things that were not very nice, but they had to be said. Even though he didn't mean harm, the fact is he's not willing to stop this custom. It's going to take you, the Shayuk, to get in these, these people's face and tell them, stop this mess. I'm going to ask you to go and study the problem of racism in the Americas, not just America, but in the Americas. Because one of your students asked you the question, you gave an answer, and I realized that there's a lot you just did not know. You're human, you're gonna make errors and mistakes. A lot of these things I'm telling you are new information you didn't know. And I'm not knocking you for not knowing, and nobody knows everything. But because we now know that people are going to ask you these questions, I'm going to ask you to research this problem. And you're going to have to start with experts that are not Muslim, but they have the information. And they're found on YouTube. Some of them religiously are going to say things that are blasphemous. And I don't approve of that either. But when it comes to the studying of racism, they have the information. And they're not making these things up. Ayo Kimathi, A-Y-O, last name spelled K-I-M-A-T-H-I, -I, knows and specialized in the psychosexual abuse that slave masters engaged in, not only against black women, but black children and black men. Raping black men in front of children, as an example. This is a terrible thing to say, but I got to give you this example so you know what I'm talking about. He has done research on this, and he delivers toss and he exposes it. He says some things that are blasphemous. But hey, look, you know, the real Muslim Muslims with the proper Akita have not tackled this issue. They duck their head in the sand. And they've said things like what you say, all lives matter. Some black people are racist too. My father-in-law is black. Which are the exact same things as I mentioned before that white racists in America who don't even know they're racist would say to try to silence the conversations that need to be had. You were saying these things because maybe because you heard others say this without knowing the reason for which they're saying it. Which brings me to a corollary. There's a, a corollary to this in your culture. I don't mean you personally, but in the culture of the people where you live, sir. That's what I mean. Some people will say opt to mean black. And when I call them out on it or somebody else says stop this mess, they'll say cool enough, I'll be the law. They're making a true statement, but for the wrong reasons. They don't want to be corrected. No, you need to be corrected. Sir, you screwed up. You didn't mean it, all of us. You didn't mean slaves. You didn't say slaves to mean people. You said slaves to mean black. You insulted one race and only one race. And people, you know, they just don't want to be corrected. So they say, cool and I'll be the law. Instead of saying, I screwed up, I'm sorry, I need to be unbrainwashed. That's the problem. So, you know, I need you to study this because the Muslims will need you to study this issue. And it's going to take some years. And in the meantime, when Muslims ask you questions, you may have to give an answer that is preliminary in nature. Meaning, okay, student, listen, this is what I know so far from my studies. Here's my preliminary answer until you can get a more detailed answer from someone who knows the subject better than I do. I'm still learning. And that's a fair answer to give. And then when you've really researched it and you can give answers to most questions they may have, you can say, knowing Islam and knowing about this problem, this is what we got to do. 
I studied in history, sir, and I specialized in this problem of racism and the history of racism. This was one of my specialties. So if you had questions and you asked me, I wouldn't mind answering them. And I think I, I might go ahead and reach out to you on Facebook privately so that you may know who I am as long as you don't give my name um, publicly because I'm recording this message without my name so that people have to listen to the message and not worry about who the messenger is. I got privacy to protect. I got other people who depend on me and I can't have them exposed either. I can't have their names become public and all this in private. Yeah, public. I don't want my children's pictures on the internet um, from anywhere within the last five years so that people might target them. I don't want my wife's photos on the internet for obvious reasons. I don't want my parents' photos on the internet. So you can understand why I'm being private about this. But because I'm saying you got to research this, this is a must for the Muslim Ummah. Mostly for the Muslims not living in the West. The Muslims living in the Muslim lands. They need to know about this problem of racism, white supremacy, and subconscious subliminal brainwashing. They need to know about these things. Or their faith is in danger. If you want to talk about imitation of the Kufar, well, in today's context, you can't talk about that without talking about racism, and white supremacy, inferiority complex, and subliminal brainwashing. If you don't talk about these things, you're not talking about any other problem in the world successfully, <laughs> including those of us who imitate the Kufar. And I need you to research this for the sake of these Muslim youth here who are asking you the question, or the questions. And I'm willing to help with this, to be fair. And sir, that brings me, speaking of imitation of the Kufar, that brings me to another point. Um, you may not have known that um, in Africa and in the black Caribbean islands, that skin bleach is the number one selling cosmetic product. Maybe in India and Pakistan too, skin bleach, sir. Putting creams on the skin, harming the melanocyte cells that are necessary for UV protection from UV radiation, I mean, in order to get a lighter skin complexion because they don't like their own dark skin. And it is the highest selling cosmetic product. You go to Nigeria, nothing sells more than it. You go to Jamaica, nothing sells more than it. Just as an example. You may not have known this. This is from Ukta Tanakis. We black people are trying to fight this Ukta Tanakis amongst our own. We got this problem, but we also have enough of us trying to fight it. I'm sorry, sir, in the Arab world, there aren't enough people trying to fight this Ukta Tanakis and this idea that white is right. They don't even know they got this idea half the time. Hell, they think they're white. We need this to be, I'm sorry, but we Muslims who come from darker skin backgrounds and even from Caucasian background coming out of the West cannot sit here and keep praying behind Muslims in the Eastern world who don't care about Ukda Tanakis and the inferiority complex and white supremacy and subliminal brainwashing and don't want to know about it and don't want to hear about it and don't want us to tell anybody about it and just want to go along with the flow and okay, their daughter uses skin bleach, so what? No, uh-uh, it's unacceptable. Trying to look like the oppressor of the planet is unacceptable for the Muslim. That's worse than regular imitation of the Kufar. Which Kufar are we imitating, sir? It's always the worst ones. The Western European white Kufar who oppressed everybody else. Now that's not regular imitation of the Kufar, sir. That's the worst variety of it. The worst degree of it. The Muslims aren't talking about this. I mean, are we imitating the Kufar out of Zimbabwe, sir? Honestly, no, we're not. The black and the poor, we're not doing it. Okay, that would be better than if we were imitating the Kufar out of Western Europe who oppressed and killed and colonized and raped and stole resources from everybody. But that's exactly what the hell we're doing. And we need shayuk like you with a sharp mind and multiple languages and religious knowledge to learn these other issues as well because they're creeping into the, 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 the subconscious minds of the Muslims and affecting them. You may not have known, sir, that this brainwashing was intentional and subliminal. You know now. 
You may not have known that if this brainwashing continues to be successful, in another two generations, black people and Arabs will be enemies. As I mentioned before. But you know now, you gotta tell them this. You gotta let them know. You may, not, you may have thought, sir, that this cultural um, preference for the lightest skin and the lightest colored eyes and the blonde hair and the marriage partner is um, actually an evidence of racism and this brainwashing. You may have thought it's just cultural. You may not have known that this cultural preference, since it always goes towards, since it keeps leaning towards the oppressor again, and those who look like the oppressor, is actually racism. I mean, I'm sorry. But if an entire society prefers people who don't even look like they're from this same climate in the least bit, um, that is evidence that, that somebody else has affected their thinking. You may not have known, sir, uh, but black folks who are conscious are the ones who come into Islam. And they're the ones who aren't going to tolerate this. You got black folks with inferiority complex. Guess what? They usually don't become Muslim, sir. It's the ones who don't have it that become Muslim. And they're the ones least likely to tolerate it in other Muslims. They're not going to say, oh, it's your personal choice. They're going to say, no, you're a goddamn racist. And we're so fed up with it, some of us are ready to make takfir on people who say they're Muslim and they have racist ideas. I'm ready to make takfir on people who say they're Muslim and they try to justify having a racist idea. But if they admit they're wrong, I just say you're a weak Muslim, you're useless to us, but hey, you're a Muslim. But the ones who try to say, oh no, I'm not really wrong, okay, you can't treat people equally or even regard them equally, and you say you're not wrong, you're a Catholic because you're making halal what Allah made haram. <laughs> Disbeliever, apostate Kafir. I'm ready to make talk on them for that because it's an actual principle in the deen, an actual nullification of the religion if you um, forbid what Allah allows or if you allow what Allah forbids. That's why I'm ready to do it. Strictly for those who can't admit that they're wrong, you see. Now, if someone doesn't know they're, they're racist, then they don't know. But hey, if they're racist and don't know it, I can usually find out. And I don't mind telling them. And that's what we black folks come in. We're going to do this. And it's going to be very uncomfortable for a lot of Muslims that are not black. Or don't consider themselves black. Don't know they're black. And they're going to have to shut the hell up and let us tell them. And make the corrections. It's going to be necessary because um, they don't know that they got these Uqtatanakas. That's worse than what you might call Isbal. Somebody just buying a pair of pants and they go over the ankle. That, this is worse than that. Scholars differ on this ball, and I would like to play it safe and just uh, keep my pants right at the ankle, right to the top of it, so that the leg is covered. I'd rather do that. But uh, when it comes to this, this is an issue that's not being talked about, and it is far worse. It is much worse, much, much worse. It's much more divisive. I'm not going to let anybody who calls black people ob to come and tell me about the length of my pants and my thobe. He uses the word ob and he won't admit he's wrong. Get the hell out of my goddamn face before I knock you out. That's my response to them. I've told this to two people here already. <laughs> hold up, hold up. You want to tell me about my haircut being haram even though the hadith described another haircut altogether but you can't stop calling black people slaves. Get the hell out of my face before I knock you out. And I'm glad I said it. And I'm going to do it again. I'm not repenting for that. Because we can't afford it. This is a very divisive issue. And Muslims ain't getting up in people's faces and saying, stop this mess. What I'm going to need, what we are going to need from you, Sheikh, is to also understand how the shuyukh have been brainwashed without realizing it. So that they can pull this out of their own heads. Yes, this brainwashing has affected all of us. We're all victims of it to some extent. But I need the shiuk to understand that they're going to have to confront this even in themselves. And I'll give you an example. Most shiuk know that the dreadlock hairstyle is haram. I shouldn't even say they know. Most of them feel like it's haram. Because it's imitation of Rastafarians. How they even know about Rastafarians, I don't know. Most shiuk don't study history outside of the Islamic Empire, 
Some do. But they associate it with Jamaica, different religion. So they say, oh, it's imitation of the Kufar. Well, sir, that hairstyle is popular in Jamaica, but it started in Africa. And I don't, I, I didn't find any historical references to it being specific to a religion. It was a hairstyle designed for kinky hair. However, um, if there, then maybe there is a reference to it being specific to a religion. I just couldn't find it in history. But this was before black people were in the Caribbean in any large numbers to begin with. So, scholars now look at nappy, kinky hair that we have, we black folks. Same kind Adam had, I'm sure, alayhi salam. And uh, they say, well, it's haram. We're pretty sure it's haram. Can't have that hairstyle. Okay, slow your roll. I've seen black Saudi men put straight in their hair. Excuse me. If it is haram for black men to wear their kinky hair naturally, but just put into locks, then isn't it more haram for black men to straighten their hair to make it look more like the white oppressors of the planet? The Shiuk haven't thought about this. It never crossed their mind. Why? Brainwashed not to think about it. White is legitimate. White is normal. White is right. Black is less normal. If it's not completely abnormal in their minds, I mean, then it's just all less normal. <laughs> because we're trained to see white as normal. Never mind that Adam alayhi salam was black. Musa was black. Most of the prophets actually were black. And in the more recent times, you had some that might have been considered not black. Although in America, they'd have been considered black. Jesus, with his description, would have been considered a light-skinned black man. Alayhi salam. But... Never mind that the majority were black because people started off black. We now are trained to see white as normal today. We need shayuk like you to confront this whole mindset. I call it white's disease. And I don't say this to insult white people for their DNA. That's not it. But to insult white supremacists for their white supremacy. I call it this. Maybe we should just call it white supremacy. They need to confront the white supremacy in their own minds. And we need you all to lead this effort. Or else it's going to be some serious problems. Because frankly, sir, North Africa is much worse than their racism. And I'm, I'm, I'm about ready to start killing some of them. as Kaffirs. Because they won't challenge their own thinking. And they're, on walking, they're walking around on African soil. With all due respect, that's not their land. If they don't count themselves black, what are they doing in Africa? And then looking down on black people. Now, get the hell out. Don't worry, I'll say the same thing for the Chinese who are going into Africa right now in large numbers and want to bar black people from Chinese restaurants. Uh-uh, this is African soil. You got a problem with black people? Get the hell out of our land. And don't come back. Same with white South Africans. I don't think they belong there. I don't even call them South Africans. <laughs> They're white people from Europe who live in South Africa. <laughs> That's what I call them. Get the hell out. You don't belong here. We were here first. You're an invader, oppressor, who deserves to be driven into the ocean. Get out. That's how I feel about it. So I'm not just singling out the North Africans, but I'm very disappointed in the North Africans calling themselves Muslims and then got the nerve to say, well, we're white and look at these black people and look down on us. Uh-uh. No, no, I call them Kaffirs. Unless, of course, they admit they're wrong and they need to fix this stuff. And to the ones that live in North Africa and they don't have this racist mindset, no matter what their complexion or origin is, my sympathy goes out to them because they got to be surrounded by a bunch, by a bunch of uh, jackass idiots who don't deserve to live on African soil. And who do deserve to be pushed into the Mediterranean, hoping that White folks from Europe will come and save them and pick them up from drowning and maybe accept them in Europe since they're so white. That's how we black folks are beginning to feel about this. And this has been going on for decades. So I'm recommending that you all um, confront this mindset amongst Arabs in general. Because we black folks... We ain't going to tolerate an inch of this from a Muslim. We may react more harshly to another Muslim with these ideas than we would to a Kafir. I will. A Kafir calls me the N-word, sir. I call him a cracker. And I'll leave him. 
If a Muslim says Abd and he's talking about black people, I'm going to get up in his face until he says I was wrong. I'm sorry. And if he doesn't, he tries to keep saying he's right. I'm going to call him a calf and deck him in his chin. I'm going to say straight up, you think what you said is okay? There's no problem with it? Why do you think God feels about that? You're going to get up in Adam's face and say it? <laughs> yes, I don't think it's okay. Pop, chin check. Fortunately, nobody's gone that far with me yet. But I'm not the only one like this, sir. I'm just the one that's willing to pick up this recording device and tell you all about it so that you all can confront your own people of your own color with this mess and tell them y'all better cut this out. And there are things I got to go back and tell black folks. But we Muslims are already doing that, those of us who are black. We're telling other black folks what we need to know. We don't see an effort on the part of the Arabs to go back and tell other Arabs when they're being a bunch of rats behind Bedouins, the same ones whom Allah insulted in Surah Toba, verse 97 and 98, for being a bunch of stubborn uh, desert running Bedouins. And you know the verses better than I do in Arabic, but I remember the translations and the meanings. Surah Toba, verse 97 and 98 and 99. Two verses condemning and warning and one verse praising a minority. And that is exactly the proportion of Bedouins in this northern town in which I live that I have found to be ignorant, even if they're hospitable, they're ignorant, they're stubborn, almost Kafirs because of some of the practices that they hold on to and cling to that are un-Islamic. And the proportion that I found to be Salihin and putting Islam above their backwards Bedouin culture that's not worth a hill of beans. It's about two-thirds of them that are, that are they're not worth crap. I wouldn't care if they got struck by lightning and, and I wouldn't miss them. And it's about a third of them here who are good and they mean well. And if they do do something wrong, they will repent when they see what they've done wrong. Amazing. But in order for this number to change, I'm going to need some of you all to confront your people with this ignor about this ignorance and this brainwashing and these assumptions that they don't even know they're making. And don't worry, there are enough black people who are Muslim that are confronting other black folks about the mistakes that we've been clinging to. And a lot of our youth are turning to the elders and telling them, we will not follow you. Even if you're older than us, we will not obey you in this matter that's wrong. <laughs> we got that going on already. I hope that what I've said has been a benefit. I do mean... Uh, I do intend the mutual benefit of both sides of this color line within the Muslim Ummah. And I hope that what I've said has been a benefit and everything I've said that is true is from Allah and everything I've said that is false is from myself and from the shaitan. Assalamu alaikum.